Hello everyone, happy Friday. I'm Haritosh Shavasto, a public speaking coach, certified mentor, a bestseller author, and also an IT portfolio manager in TCS. And this is the kind of life that I love because it's it's going to be somebody very, very special coming out today. And we're going to have some candid conversation with that person. So before I call on him, I'm going to give a small introduction about him. He is a com communication and public speaking coach. He helps professionals communicate with confidence, clarity, and, imp and impact. He's helped more than 5,000 people across India and coach professionals from multiple organizations, including TCS, Infosys, Boeing, Wipro, etc. He's passionate about personal growth, leadership, communication, and public speaking. And when he's not delivering training, he loves to come to such interviews, podcasts, and other places to talk about public speaking, which I'm also passionate about. So please help me welcome Akshat Srivastava, who's going to be with me shortly. And here he is. Uh, thank you so much, Akshat, for joining and accepting the invite. Thank you so much for inviting me, Haritosh. I'm so excited to be here. Great, great. So I did give a small intro about you before you came into the interview, but anything else you want to talk about what you do uh, in your job? Job? Okay. <laughs> what do you actually do about and how do you help individuals? I think you've been very kind with my introduction, Haritosh. You were phenomenal out there. And I think you've said everything. So everything that's on my profile, I think you said it pretty well. Thank you for such a kind introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you. Glad to be here with you. Now, since we both are uh, passionate about public speaking, I thought the conversation and agenda of this is going to be something related to public speaking. And to be honest, one of the things that uh, we a lot of people dread about is impromptu speaking. So I thought, let's go impromptu in this and let's see what kind of things we both can bring up on the table. And anyone who's watching this interview live on Facebook or on LinkedIn, feel free to post your comments or question on, and we'll see what we can take it up. So Akshat, I'll start off with you asking that now, when you think about public speaking, what is that one common misbelief myth that you've heard across over and over again? I think there are many Haritosh, but if there is one I have to talk about is a lot of us believe that if we, have, if we did not start speaking public, speaking in public at a very early age, it's too late. And I've seen this happening with even 20, 25 year olds. And they say I've never participated in public speaking when I was in school. So I don't know if I can really do it right now. So I think that's a very big miss very big misconception, a very a belief that's not really true. In fact, I started my public speaking when I was in school, when I was in college. But in reality, I learned actual public speaking after I came into job. That's when I joined Toastmasters Club. That's where I started. So if you if you ask me one thing that people misbelieve about public speaking, it's that that there is a time to start. In fact, there is no time to start. You can start whenever you want. Love it, love it. I, I would just add on to that. The, the best time to start learning about and practicing public speaking is now. Now is the time to actually practice that and learn about public speaking. And if I have to add that to that, I think one of the misconceptions, uh, again, as I feel, is that you no know, people think that the great speakers are having a special DNA or they are born great speakers. <laughs> but as right. you and me both know, it's a process. It is indeed a process about public speaking and we anybody can go through the public speaking and become a great public speaker. There is no special DNA, special injection, special, uh, yeah, you don't have to go out of the earth experience to become a public speaker, great public speaker. Anybody can become that great, great. Absolutely. 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 So my next question or next topic of discussion would be that now, we're talking about impromptu speaking and uh, have you ever had any awkward question, awkward impromptu experience with you that you still remember? So I have many, I've had many. In fact, the first time I actually started impromptu speaking. So when I started speaking in public, it was always prepared. I was hosting events. I was doing presentations, but my real experience with impromptu speaking happened in Toastmasters when they invited me for something called as table topics. Oh. And that 
for the first time i absolutely went blank i had no idea what to talk about but i realized that in impromptu speaking if you follow just certain strategies you can always speak in any kind of situation right now if you ask me for most of such conversations for which i used to prepare earlier i no go impromptu because when i speak impromptu it comes right from within i don't have to prepare any answer so whatever i'm speaking it's very natural so i think that's one of the strong aspects of speaking impromptu everything comes out very authentically so yes i have had very awkward situations before where i went blank where i couldn't think of anything where i wanted to speak about something but i spoke about something else so yes i think you have would have had your such experiences as well what about you haritosh yeah yeah totally agree and whenever you think about those deadly table topics yeah that's something everybody is fearful i i have had my own experience where i like how oh, what happened to me suddenly my hands are trembling my legs are shaking like what happened to me and and the reason was i got something which i had absolutely no clue about what i'm going to say and and the, and like you said the magic is whenever you are done with that you feel like ah i could have done something else now you now you start getting all those kind of weird ideas all time like <laughs> i could have talk about that i could have so it's it's so easy to sit in the audience and say oh he's not talking about that but when you go up there stand there that's when the whole world comes to you and looking at that uh, great point and i think i i love your point that you said now you have to be authentic uh, and you have to that's know that's very true and the, the best ahead. ideas come to you after you've gotten down from the stage absolutely <laughs> absolutely like ah yeah yeah and and yeah we all we all judge uh, ourselves more than others and we all get that great uh now another aspect of public speaking is uh, about having this prepared talk uh, and you no know, whenever you are asked to give a speech what is the process that you follow for example if uh, if somebody asks you that actually i want you to come and uh, train people about public speaking in two or three weeks time what is that process that you you know go through to prepare uh, i'm pretty sure you you prepare something you don't just go impromptu in such training so how do you prepare for such scenarios so for keynote speeches and for sessions i definitely prepare i never go impromptu for such conversations i go impromptu so there are many many different strategies that can be followed one strategy that i follow is something that i've devised for myself so what really happens is when you start speaking in public over time you come up with your own strategies you just start finding out what works for you so i'll tell you step by step what i really do so whenever i'm invited to deliver a keynote speech or a session somewhere the first thing i do is i always try to understand the audience mm. who am i going to speak to if i'm going to whether i'm going to speak to a bunch of college kids or am i speaking to professionals so what really happens is when you understand your audience better you know what kind of content needs to be delivered so if i'm talking to teenagers i'll be talking about something like avengers harry potter what something that they can relate to if i'm talking to someone who is 6 year old i might talk about bagban i think that's what they will relate to so <laughs> something like that it helps me curate the right stories so first mm-hmm. step is always understanding the audience second step would be understanding the purpose now haritosh you would understand that any speech on the planet falls into one of the four categories to inform to persuade to entertain or to inspire correct so i try to understand what do i want to do with this audience True. so that that is the second step and once these two steps are clear only then and then i go and prepare the content what mm-hmm. about you haritosh how do you go about it no amazing amazing and i can find so many similarities in what you said actually what i follow is again a similar uh, five step process for content creation as i say in my uh, trainings as well uh, and the first step is uh, discovery which is where you discover who's going to be in your audience who's going to Uh, listen to or watch this uh, keynote or or was this speech or something and who's the what is the prime objective at that so that's the step one that for me as well and then step two is where i go about to brainstorming so i my per- personal process is i probably if i have two three weeks to prepare i get a big chart paper and i use the uh, left side or right side whatever the creative side of brain i forget which side is that but creative side of brain to list down all the particular things that i can think about not involving the 
other analytical side of the brain. I'll list down all the ideas that I can think about that particular topic. And once I'm done to that, that's when I involve the other side of the brain, analytical side, where I'll list down, I'll prioritize, I'll time box, I'll eliminate a few things. And that's when I'll start incorporating stories and then we'll do the practice and other things. So that's my five-step process that I do whenever I'm doing that, but love that. That's phenomenal. I think that is the beauty of speaking in public. The more experience you gain, you devise your own strategies. You find out Absolutely. your own style. Yeah. And I think more Absolutely. of public speaking is about finding your own style. What do exactly. you think? Exactly. Exactly. I think I can't agree more to that. I think uh, uh, it, it's it's all about finding yourself. I think the true public speakers are those who are able to be authentic on the self so that uh, when they go off stage, you can say it is the same person who was speaking. And if you are having split personality, like you know, when you hear somebody who's speaking at vibrant, energetic, and then they get out and like, ah, oh, what happened to him? Uh, that's where you fail as a public speaker. You have to be authentic. So totally agree. Now, one thing which I, I think this both... relates yeah, not ahead, just to public speaking. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think. Uh... No, no, no. So one another so thing that this reminds now, me this is not a joke. Planned. This is completely impromptu because we all are talking to each other. So go ahead, Akshat. You were you were having some point, and then I'll come back to that I, point. Yeah. I think. I think Haritosh, there is some delay from the internet because I'm hearing your voice after I start speaking. So oh, probably. Okay, okay. No worries. No worries. I'll, I'll right. keep quiet. No, no, no. That that's not what I mean. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So Aritosh, this actually reminded me of a joke where uh, since you talked about how person a person needs to be exactly the way he's on stage or the person needs to be on stage exactly the person who is he is be be behind the stage. So that reminds me of a personal branding joke because uh, recently there is a lot of uh, talk on LinkedIn especially regarding personal branding. So a lot of people who do a pretty who do pretty good personal branding on LinkedIn but when you meet them in public, they're entirely different people. Oh, yeah. Have you felt that? Absolutely. So I always tell people, I always tell people, ki LinkedIn pe to personal branding kar loge, real life mein kya karoge? Yeah, true, true. It, it's about personal branding in real life versus LinkedIn and other platforms. It's not only, I, I, I have seen that not only on LinkedIn, I've seen it in all across all the social media. It's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Everybody is posting the pictures of their big breaks, their big uh, holidays, their big breaks, but nobody's talking about their failures, their frustration, their their encounters that they don't want to talk about. So, but that that doesn't bring the real authentic self of them in public. So, great, great. Now, I wanted to talk about one thing which both of us said in our processes stories. I guess. I'm a big fan of storytelling and I, as I understand you also love uh, the whole concept of storytelling. So what what is your thought about you know, how can somebody become a storyteller and what are some of the components, parts and tips, spices, whatever you want to call, they can use to make their stories effective? So one thing would be always speaking from experience. Now, Haritosh, if you tell me to speak about Statue of Liberty, I don't know a lot of facts about it. I just know that it's in New York. Uh, it was built somewhere, I think, after the American independence. I don't know a lot of facts about it. But, you know, I can always tell a story around it. Something like this. When I was 10 years old, that's when I heard about Statue of Liberty for the first time. And that's when I decided that one day I'm going to go to New York, get a picture there, come back and show it to my friends. I am right now almost 31. I have never been to New York, but I've been to Statue of Unity. And I think that gives me immense pride to be there as well. So if you just see, I just told a story, I can go on and on and on and on. So the thing about telling stories is when you speak from experience, you don't have to create fake stories, first of Absolutely. all. And you don't need a lot of information to tell stories. You don't need a lot of, you don't need to be an expert in something to talk of, to, to talk about your personal experience. And I think that's the beauty of personal stories, especially mm -hmm, mm -hmm. talking about the components of stories. There are many, many, many different components. I would talk about few. First would be the characters True. who are the prime characters in the story. In, a, in case of a personal story, the prime character is you. That's the main character. And if you're in, introducing other characters in the story, like your parents, friends, somewhere in your personal experience, apart from that, there's a plot. 
the context in which the entire story is based then there is some kind of conflict if you would see mm-hmm. haritosh the best of the movies that we like the best of stories like harry potter a lot of the rings there is always some kind of conflict true and i think that conflict keeps up the curiosity of the audience mm. and it is such an important part of a story so three i would talk about characters plot conflict these are the main apart from that you can add a little bit of more and you know make it more spicier what are your thoughts on it haritosh no i i love that i love that i think uh, character conflicts plot everything is so important in that i think uh, i was yesterday i started watching a movie uh, atrangi and it's not the only movie uh, i'm not going to talk about but it started with a plot where sara ali khan is being chased by four people and then she suddenly goes to railway station and start throwing glasses and all and that's like this is what a story has to be i don't i have not seen the full movie i don't know what it was but a grand opening a opening which can actually make you curious is what's going on why why is she running why right. is there are people behind her why is she throwing stuff around that makes you curious and i think having that curiosity part and right from the start once there is no half of the story gone and then you bring up this curiosity your audience <laughs> might be sleeping by then so you you have to bring right. that curiosity part at the very start within a few seconds of your story uh, that will keep the hook and that will keep your audience glued to work till the end and also having the proper resolution i've also seen a lot of story where there is a big conflict there is something big happening uh, but the resolution is like yeah they lived happily ever after and like i i feel dissatisfied in those stories you have to have a proper <laughs> resolution you need to have something which worked for them something some lesson out of that so that's very uh, very good i also about the first point that you said about you no know, personal story uh, i got this book called story worthy I think I have that here. Yeah. So I was reading that today morning itself, and Matthew Dix, he he is a six-time Grand Slam, uh, Story Slam winner, Mod Story Slam winner. He says that no, it has to be your story number one. Otherwise, you can always say about your side of the story. So it could be the story about Akshata, how I invited Akshata to this, and how he's coming. and but i can always tell my side of story that why i th- thought about akshat and wh- how did he respond and how did we are doing this live and maybe i'll talk about it later so i can always talk about my side of story even if it is not my story and that in, in itself can become a very compelling and very interesting story because i'm i'm coming from my own emotion i'm coming from my own experience in that sense as well absolutely have you heard of a book called shiva trilogy by amish tripathi i've heard the name amish tripathi a lot yeah so he has also written another book that's ramchandra series and in that mm-hmm. book he has taught he has told ramayan from three different perspectives from ram's mm-hmm. perspective sita's perspective and ravan's perspective so three books all coming at the po- at the point their stories and their perspectives so i think that's what make a story very interesting Dif- different perspectives like you said you can always tell your perspective of the story right right and yes, and if we yeah. think about some of the movies that's what they are they'll start with somebody uh, somebody's perspective and then in the midway they will change to somebody else's perspective and it will become all the more interesting like wow we, i didn't think about that great it great. will take up the conflict yeah that's take up the conflict to the peak yeah amazing amazing so uh, it, it's been great uh, talking to you akshat and we'll be talking about probably 15 Oh, twenty minutes or so. Uh, so, if I have to ask you, what is that one advice that you no, know, you as a public speaking coach wants to give any aspiring speaker? What would that be? I think the first advice would be to start as soon as you can, because what I have observed is, as we grow in our age, if you don't overcome your certain fears, it becomes a mental block. So, earlier I clear those blocks, the better, because I remember. when i was in college i used to think i should have started back in school when i was i've met i've met people who were in job they said that i should have started back in college people who are 30 they think i should have started back at 22 probably so this is how it always keeps on going so i think the first advice would be to start as soon as possible the second was would be that what i have personally felt that 
that public speaking isn't just about speaking in public it actually brings a lot of transformative effect in a person's personality how you think how you do everything like for personally for me it has given me freedom mm. it has given me freedom it has given me confidence so it's not just about my career it's not just about growing in my career it's about growing as a person so second advice would be to start the first would be to start as soon as possible second would be of course to start so i think that makes it just one advice to go ahead and do it amazing amazing what about you varitosh yeah. what would be your advice no, people who are just starting off no, thank you uh, thank you akshay for asking that i i think it's similar to what you said no uh, start and start as soon as you can i would say if you still have lot of uh, jitters if you still feel very conscious about speaking change think of changing the focus uh, you are not speaking about you the purpose of public speaking is not to talk and boast about yourself the purpose of speaking is to help the audience and if you can take that perspective like what is the objective what is that one thing that you want your audience to do after you speak what is that one thing that you want them to think about when you remember that that can tremendously help you overcome all these kind of fears all this kind of self doubt that happens so remember that it's not about you it's about the audience absolutely absolutely aridosh i agree thank you so much akshat uh, so tell us how can people reach out to you uh, if they want to hire you if they want to talk to you more about or they want to have you in these interviews and podcasts how they how can they reach out to you so you can reach out to my to me on my website www.akshatshivastav.in or find me on linkedin so i'm mostly active on linkedin if you drop me a message high chances i'll be able to see it probably in a day or two because i keep getting a lot of messages so yes i'll be able to see it and i think that would be the way to go about it thank you so much akshat it was an incredible honor and pleasure to have you learn from you and have this candid conversation so looking forward to having many more such conversation in future i think you're very humble haritosh such a phenomenal speaker like you saying that you got to learn something from me that's very humble of you and it was pleasure to be here i absolutely love this conversation and thank you for inviting me aritosh looking forward for more such conversations thank you so much so that was akshat srivastava a public speaking coach who loves to help people who loves to empower individuals become a better public speaker so do check out his profile and do check out what kind of amazing work akshat is doing and and please connect with him if you need that and by the way before i go i just wanted to wish you in advance uh, for people especially in india uh, republic day is coming so happy republic day in advance uh, take care stay safe and there's something very exciting coming up very soon so if you want to know more about that please put a comment call interested in the chat and i'll reach out to you with more details until then as i say every time keep learning keep growing and keep going out of your comfort zone This is Haritosh and I'll see you in my next live. Take care.